it is the summer the NBA season's over and you're texting me earlier you were you were watching some <laughs> NBA draft prospects so my question yeah. to you which prospects does Jeff like at five right now okay so uh, very few uh, I'll keep it short I think this draft uh, as a whole is a little underwhelming um, and it, of course, it's on brand. The last three years, they've had the fifth overall pick. And I think this draft, even though people say that often, it's like, oh, this draft is is super underwhelming. But then you find out there's three to four really good players from it. So I get that point. But my overall reaction, and I, I did something for uh, Police Report as well, uh, reacting to the draft. I did it with Brandon, Brandon Dan, shout out to him. And we mm -hmm. were extremely disappointed, obviously. But when you look at it, when you look at it, there, I think there'll be some players in the top 10. And that, that's also the positive of an underwhelming draft. There's no clear number one player, uh, even though SARS is going to be, a, a, I think, a really good player. But he's going to go probably go number one. But when you look at the other guys that could potentially fall and, and you think, OK, there, I think there's there could be some diamonds in the rough. I know the the fan, uh, at least the, the guy that I think causes the most noise is uh, Modest Berzelis. And I, I, I think him as a player on paper works. I think the 6'9 frame, the upside with his shooting, I know that's still a concern, but you look back at high school, he was a, he was a what, 40-something percent three-point shooter. So I think there's something there. I like, And he's got a little bit of that dog in him, too, defensively. He's a good rim protector. So, you know, hey, if they stay put at five and you take Berzelis, it's not a pick that I think people are going to be jumping up and down about, but I, I think it'd be a good pick. It's like, okay, you got Berzelis. I think he fits well with who they have currently. But a player that I'm intrigued by, even though I'm not completely sold on just in terms of like potential, it's just, it's probably just the cop out pick. And I don't think Tr Trajan's going to do this based on his track record and what he said is Dalton connect. Like you can't, that dude can shoot the hell out of the ball. Absolutely. Now he can't stop a nosebleed on defense. It's fair, but you look at his shooting ability. You can't help but be like, okay, this guy with who they currently have, if they don't trade away Ivy and they keep the core together, that's the spacing that, you know, hey, and, but you can also argue you can get some shooting in free agency. But I, I like Dalton Connect a lot. I know he's a little older, which is always a turnoff. But sometimes, guys, when, when you look at upside, when you're always taking upside, sometimes you, you just want to know you're getting a solid player, someone who can play in this league for a long time. And I think Dalton Connect can do that. And he comes out of the draft with, with a lot of tools. You're not waiting for him to develop into, you know, can he improve this? Can he improve? You know what you're getting. You're getting a, a, an absolute sharpshooter. So, I'm I'm open to Dalton Connect, but I think you know Modest is someone that kind of fits the the mold for a, a Trajan Langdon pick, in my opinion. And who's going to be there? There's a couple players I, I think, and I saw you mention Ron Holland, and I like Ron Holland. You know, I think in terms of uh, having another wing who can be an absolute menace defensively. You look back at his high school rec uh, track record too. So I think I believe he's a number one player coming out, so mm -hmm. he's got a prestigious track record. But again, to me, it's like going back to the spacing thing. It, that does concern me with Ron Holland. He, he reminds me, even though I think he he, he will be better because I like his his resume a little more. But he he's basically like another Asar in my opinion. Like you're getting another a uh, really good defensive wing, absolutely really good defensively. But the shot, it's like, can he develop it? And and his free throw shooting isn't great, which is another concern for me when you look at a mm -hmm. guy who potentially grow as a shooter. So modest, I'm okay with. I'm comfortable with the pick, and I think that's probably the favorite in my opinion to be a piston. But Dalton Connect is kind of that, you know, that uh, the sleeper where I'm like, okay, I, I'm intrigued because of how well he can shoot the basketball, especially with Cade and, and Jaden Ivey, with those two guys. Yeah, so I liked Ron Holland given if Troy Weaver was still here because it seems like a Troy guy, right? Uh, but, you know, we said at the top of the podcast, we both think he's going to be good. I honestly think offensively, if you want to draft the guy that's going to contribute, Mm -hmm. and help this team. There are two prospects in the top five that you could possibly draft. You said the first guy, Dalton Connect out of Tennessee, 23 years old, probably the most NBA-ready prospect that's going to be drafted in the lottery. He can he could average 10 points right now in the NBA. Right. Just his offensive versatility, scoring at all three levels, kind of reminds you of like a Tyler Hero in a sense. Just His athleticism, I think, is something that a lot of Pistons fans are intrigued by. Um, but, again... Given who the president is and him talking about potential and skill set, I don't really know if they would draft Dalton Connect at five. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong and they take I, Dalton, I Dalton Connect. I can get clipped and look like a jackass. It, it's happened before and I'm sure it, it won't stop. The other guy is Reed Shepard out of Kentucky. 
I think if you're you're looking for shooting, you're looking for an elite skill, and someone that fits next to Cade Cunningham, floor spacing wise, Reed Shepard makes a whole lot of sense for the Detroit Pistons. Um, his combine, I think he had the highest vertical out of anyone there. He had like the highest, it was like a 40 inch vertical. I think Reed Shepard makes a whole lot of sense for the Pistons if they want to go offensively. They're banking on potential. You said it earlier. Modest mm-hmm. Bazelos has probably the most potential, and if he hits his ceiling, he could be he could become a two way monster. Like if that if his shot is more consistent, um, if he can you know knock down a three point shot you know around the you know 35 percent, then yeah, Modest Bazelos uh, could be a hell of a pick. I mean, there's also guys um, like Ron Dillingham that I've mm-hmm. seen just follow mocks off a cliff. And, you know, you have point guards like Nikola Topic and Stefan Castle be consensus top five picks. I mean, I think there's a lot of routes the Pistons could go in. I ultimately think they're going to trade down in the draft and try to target a guy maybe like a Cody Williams or maybe a TJ Salong out of France. I really do. I think that's more of the type of players that they they would probably target. But that's just my gut feeling right now. And we're in May. That could completely change in a month. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and to your Cody Williams point, that is a, that is another guy that if you're trading back, I'm I'm comfortable with. But uh, I just again, you, we're not all you're not. No one's blind to the fact of what the Pistons need. You need you need a wing, ideally who can play next to to Jalen Duran. I think Modest does. He, he fits that uh, description. He can play next to Duran. He can provide spacing. I think, like I said, the rim protection is intriguing. He's really good in transition. This team wasn't great in transition at all last year, so I think there's a lot of things he can come and help out with. And, you know, he – you look at how he's transitioned into the G League Ignite. Even though the shooting, the three-point shot was it, – it did – the percentage-wise, it wasn't great. But you look back at some of the shots he hit that last season, it was like like must-have shots. Like, like you know, uh, shot clock ticking down. He's got the ball. He's creating his own shot. He's sizing up uh, wings uh, on the perimeter as a 6'9", uh, as a 6'9", power forward, small forward. Like I, I, I think in terms of potential, modest. He, he, I think personally, and again, we have it, it is May, but in terms of what Trajan is looking for, he just that dude just fits like exactly what he's looking for, in my opinion. But hey, you know, I, I think the other the Dalton Connect thing, it's more about intrigue, and and I think the shooting, like you said, he's the most NBA ready guy. And depending on how some GMs view the NBA draft, I don't think Trajan views it like this, but if you can get a guy you can contribute right away, especially to a roster that went 14 games, like maybe you're on board with that. But I think it's going to be a potential, and you could probably trade back and still get a a pretty good value for a player. I think this draft, you could argue that. So I'm cool with trading back and getting more assets. I am comfortable with that, 100%. Yeah, I'm very intrigued with Cody Williams. My only question is, can he hit three-pointers at a higher volume? Because if you look at his – numbers in Colorado like he hit three pointers but he didn't take a whole lot of them and that wingspan does really intrigue me of just being Mm -hmm. a guy that can switch with the SAR um and I I I don't know why people aren't as high on him maybe it's it's because of the frame um maybe his ability not to get to the basket um like other prospects other small forward prospects um but hey man I I I happen to like Cody Williams and maybe I'm just I I picked my favorite already I don't even know it that's one thing when I when I went back and I did this uh, a couple a couple weeks ago, kind of preparing more for the lottery. One thing I did notice, and you brought it up with Cody, is is the three point attempts. Uh, yeah, I think he would, he'd be like one for two. Like the percentage looked great, but when you actually look back, there wasn't a, it wasn't a high volume, which like ideally, you know, you want someone that's comfortable attempting five to seven threes. If you're good, because the Pistons do need three and D players. I mean, let's just be real; they need three and D players. Obviously. You know, it depends on, on what player you're talking about. If he's 6'9", yes, there's rim protection upside, which would be great. Um, but I think any player that fits that description with high upside, I am completely comfortable with. I just think any player that, you know, not not just from a – not just three-point percentage, but especially free throw percentage. Like, if there's a – if there's if he's a project – if he's a project in terms of shooting the ball, like, that's where I'm like, damn, Okay. Pistons don't need any more of those types of players, in my opinion. Um, and I get there's some players that you just you just grab because of the potential, but this team just desperately needs guys who just already have a formidable jump shot and can be consistent. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do I, believe in, in Modest's ability to do that. I do. Yeah. Well, you know, we could just, you know, draft Dalton Connect and we both look like jackasses. 
I'm I'm here for it. If you want an NBA ready guy, go for it. Get a guy that Kate's more comfortable with, and he doesn't have to worry about the the lane being clogged because nobody can Mm -hmm. shoot around him. I mean, go for it. I'm not a GM, and I'm glad I'm not because I'd probably be fired in a year. (laughs) (laughs) Like honestly, that's why we do these podcasts. Yeah, I do not envy any GMs like Craig Weaver out there. I really don't. 